Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to explore vision language models. So, uh, if you look at in 2024, we are seeing multiple multimodal AI models. Okay, so earlier when uh, with the rise of chat GPT, we saw uh, large language models having amazing text capabilities. Now we are seeing uh, n number of vision models which the, the LLMs or the multimodal models which have vision capabilities you know for example GPT-4 vision, Cloud-3 Opus, Gemini visions and things like that okay now there are a lot of open source model as well uh, like Lava, Fu and uh, idfx and things like that right so we're going to explore the open source model so we're going to explore Lava in this video we'll see how we can inference it but not only that we're going to look at uh, the leaderboards, the evaluation benchmarks, and try to also see the inference. So basically, we'll try to explain vision language model in this video. We are not going to build any kind of application in this. So this is more of an exploration video, uh, looking at if you are trying to benchmark the vision language model, uh, what are the ben different benchmarks that you can look at it? Because most of the time, uh, you guys have questions how to evaluate a model you know how to evaluate a large language model or how to evaluate a vision model so we're going to look at benchmark that will be useful when you are trying to evaluate so the evaluation benchmarks and what are the different leaderboards that currently exist for the multimodal models and also how you can inference and even fine tune it okay so i already have a fine at least a couple of videos on fine tuning multimodal llm so i have shown that how one can use uh, uh, IMP model, IMP V3, which is a Flamingo model, and then I and then in the, there is an Edifix, the 9B that I also have shown that uh, that how one can use that to uh, fine tune multimodal LLMs on images text pair. Now, if it, if you if you look at the definition of multimodal uh, models, when you say multimodal, it has different dimensions of uh, data, right? So audio has a different dimensions, uh, the video has a different dimensions. And so text, audio, videos that can be even if you go deeper down, that can be all, again can be molecules, genes you never know, right? So multimodal AI is really a vast concept, but here we're going to focus on vision models. Now in vision models, the vision LLMs uh, or the large vision model, okay, LVM because I'm saying this because we have large foundational models. So if you talk about large vision models, they have as an input, they will have an image and a text. So text will be probably be as your prompt and then you pass as an input or that can be a video frames as well if you want to look at that way. So that will have n number of images and the text and then it generates a text output. That's what it does. Uh, not only that, it also uh, some of the models, some of the vision models have capabilities of capturing the spatial characteristics. Now, what do you mean by spatial characteristics, guys? Now, imagine if you have an input image and you want to use a vision model like, for example, Lava, okay, and you want to find out a specific object if you want to detect a specific object or you want to segment any object in that uh, in that uh, image then those are special characteristics because these models generates outputs they segment a specific object or an area right these are the things that the models have capabilities nowadays when it comes to vision model without any further delay let's look into a few things so we're going to start with leaderboards evaluation benchmarks and then we'll go a bit deeper into you know how to see how to inference and even fine tune it i can show you something uh, in the notebook if you look at my screen here, I am I have already having you know run pod set up here. I have a A hundred running on the run pod, and you can see I have probably showing this. I'll show that uh, in the later part of the video. But let's first see all the top open source vision models that we have. Because I'm not that interested in this video to talk about the closed source vision models like GPT-4, Gemini, and uh, uh, Cloud Opus. I'm not talking about those. The focus is on to see the open source vision models. Now, these are the different models that we have. We see Lava 1.6, Hermes 34B, the model size is 34B. All of these models have a permissive license except few 8B, which don't have yet. So ignore that for now. So Lava 1.6, Hermes 34B, the model size is 34. Image resolution, you can see this model has the largest image resolution capacity because it's bigger in size as well. So that's the one. Then we have DeepSeek. 
VL7B, VL chat. The chat is more of an instruction tune. So they have been fine tuned for downstream tasks like chat models and things like that. Now we have COG VLM, we have Cosmos, QN, and then there are there are others as well, IDFX or IMP V3, which is not part of this. So if you look at IDFX 9B, you can find out this. So IDFX uh, image aware decoder enhanced a Flamingo. I said IMP V3, the Flamingo model. I'll take the statement back. So I was talking about IDFX, which is a which is an which is inspired by Flamingo, which is a deep mind model. Now, uh, if you look at over here, it says a Flamingo is a closed source visual language model, but the team you know, at, at Hugging Face M4, they created an open source uh, reproduction of Flamingo. So this is a great model for uh, vision capabilities. If you have some vision use cases, you can probably use IDFX 9B Instruct. That's fantastic. I have tested it out and it works really well. Now let's go back here. So these are the models that we have. All of those are available on Hugging Face. So it depends on what's your areas of interest and what kind of use cases you are dealing with. Uh, let's go one by one at the uh, leaderboard. So the leaderboard for the first we're going to look at the leaderboards part. So the, when you talk about the leaderboard, we have something called Vision Arena by Wild Vision. It is continuously updated leaderboard. You can see it's managed by uh, people at AI2, UCSB and University of Waterloo in Canada. That's the team that they manages this leaderboard for vision capabilities. You can see and I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, if you see this, it says choose models to sample from. So they have different models. You can see Gemini Pro Vision, Lava, Vicuna 7B, uh, Mini CPM, and things like that. Right. All those models that you were seeing, even GPT4 Vision Preview. Uh, and also, they they have some rules. Upload any image and send any questions to two anonymous model. So the model have been anonymized here because they ex uh, they are also expecting feedbacks from us, the user of these leaderboards. And let me tell you why they have anonymized the model's name. Because when you are rating these models, maybe we are biased towards our favorite models. Most of the time, I am biased towards, for example, you know, GPT-4 Vision. So I will always vote GPT-4 Vision, even the output is not good. That's why they have anonymized the output, uh, the model name basically here. Now, if you look at this. Uh, sample input. We also have sample input. We're gonna try that with sample input. Okay, these are the sample inputs that you see. If you scroll down, you can you can find out the sample inputs. We're gonna talk about that a bit. And they have the the leaderboard Elo rating is live, supported model models, blah blah blah. And you can see all the necessary links well, that's find here and the acknowledgement. So that's what it is. Now first, let's look at this image. I have clicked on that. Now once you clicked on that image, you can see it's like a stadium seating you know uh, area where you know if you want to book a ticket on some uh, online application if you are in in any one of the app like in india we have uh, book my so which is very famous uh, uh, company which helps you uh, with the event booking and things like that now this is an stadium image you can see it looks like a football stadium i hope it's uh, old trafford by the way manchester united uh, but you can look at the stadium and they have some seating area and if you are booking it so the question here is that I'm going to upload these kind of images and I'm going to ask that in which area I can book my seat. Now, if you look at the question, which section, which, which section sticker would, rec would you recommend I purchase? So that's the question I'm asking. So if you look at the input, the input having a text input and then it goes with a image. Okay, so it it's we're going to test the vision capabilities of the models here. Now, let's ask the send here. Once you send, I'm expecting this model A and model B uh, response will be populated you can see it's generating right now it takes a bit of time because it, you know, these are all compute heavy models guys okay so you can see the two models which section sticker would you recommend i purchase and it takes a bit of time but expect at least 30 second to one minute of time even more than that depending on uh you can see that now here let me just go up it says Based on the seating map and pricing, I would recommend section NE1 row 23. If you want a great view, and let me if I can save this image and let's open this. I'm gonna replace this anyway. So let me just open this here. Yeah, you can see it here. Okay, so uh, 
what does it say the model b it says ne1 row 23 so let's look at that ne1 ne1 row 23 that it said yeah this one but i think it has got something wrong it says section ne1 if you want a great view close to the field at a reasonable price of 146 dollars the section in the northeast corner like 129 close but more expensive okay 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 146 is there for uh section ne2 row 23 which is not section any one row 23 okay northeast row 23 that is fine so and if you look at this response it's for a more budget friendly option section ne1 row 23 this is right i believe yes this is right you can see this has got the right pricing clear view and a high user rate of 10 oh wow it at least got that feedback as well you know that's uh the numbers which is here 10 amazing the feedbacks by the consumers and look at it in the corner of the stadium wow oh okay 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 fantastic you can see this is the north e here i believe this is the ne1 yeah this is the ne1 row 23 so basically you'll be sitting it over here and you will see this view oh wow fantastic and let's uh, read a bit below then it gives so this is the house so this is one of the leaderboard guys if you come to leaderboard you'll find out the different models the vision models and their uh their ranking you'll see gpt4 vision preview the one of the best model of course and you can look at elo rating these are all elo rating guys you know so if you are not aware of elo rating you have to search about orped elo orped elo was a hungarian scientist then he moved to united states of course and he came up with the elo rating today also in the in the probably if you are aware of chess and i hope you are in chess the uh, the players are ranked on based on elo rating today also okay so most of these are great algorithms so how do you create elo rating then you have to look at this basically a relevant ranking so it's a real uh, it's a relative ranking between two players performances when i talk about position one and position two so they are keep on changing depending on how they play if you look at chase also you know uh uh all these players they are all based on elo ratings okay uh, so uh, orpet elo was the creator of elo rating and these are all based on elo by lms yms and uh, if you look at here uh, gpt4 arena elo battle full you have to read about mmu organization you can you can read that uh, in detail but it stand out better than opus as well you can find it out over here okay and lava stands out 34b model very not that quite close guys you know there's a, there's a huge difference between 1158 and uh, 1083 when you talk about that so go through it uh, if you want to understand a bit more uh, about how ELO ratings have been calculated, but you can find out uh, LMS YS, as I said, right? They are, if you open this, they are on the chat, chat side of it. These are the more on the vision side of it. For the chat side, you have to go to LMS YS ELO rating where they, yeah, you can find it out over here. Okay. These are more texts. So you can ask questions, enter, and they record everything. Okay, so that's what it is. Now, if you look at the leaderboard, GPT-4 Turbo again. GPT-4 has been amazing, guys. OpenAI does a commendable job uh, the way they have created. But anyway, let's move on to the next leaderboard, which is Open VLM leaderboard. So first one was the Vision Arena for the multi-modal, uh, not multi-modal, for the Vision models, the LVMs. The first one was Vision Arena. The next one is Open VLM leaderboard. In Open VLM leaderboard, you can find out these are more comprehensive a bit you know you can find out different methods uh, that they have used model size you can filter it out to the gradio application so you can completely filter it out find out an a specific bench uh, a specific benchmark or a criteria to uh, to find out who scores more you know so you can find all of these over listed over here so lava has lava bench leaderboard you can see and gpt 4 v again stands out yeah now so they're basically this one is more according to the metrics and they have been ranked according to the metrics and average scores you can filter it filter it them out on proprietary licenses model size and things like that now these two so vision arena leaderboard and open vlm leaderboard these are the leaderboards now let me close the leaderboards and we move towards the benchmarks now if you are training your own or fine-tuning your own vision models what are the evaluation benchmarks you can look 
look up to okay so if you look at here we have something called vlm eval kit it says it also this is the benchmark that empowers uh, open vlm leaderboard that was just that we were just seeing if you look at here it says Open source evaluation toolkit of large vision language model LVLMs support GPT-4 plus 30 plus HF model, hugging face model. And that's the image I have it over here. You can see. Okay, and we're going to use that for some inferences that we have here. Now I scroll down. They have a very good documentation. You can go through all of these, how to use it and things like that. So VLM eval is the first one. The next one is LMMS Evolve, okay, that's that's the one you can see. LMMS Evolve, accelerating the development of large multimodal models with LMMS Evolve, and you can go through it. Okay, you can read it. It basically provides a standard common uh, line interface for evaluating selected hugging face models using data sets hosted on hugging face. This is completely hugging face related, guys. So you can scroll down, read how to basically, and you can see here. They have given all the code. The main feature includes hugging phase. They have different, you know, uh, thing data and whatever. And then you have pass different. Uh, you have some task.py that will group the task. Then you use a model, so the model responding, and then you use some post processor for the evaluation. And then comes up with the scores like BLU, accuracy, log samples, blah blah blah. Right. So this is what it is. And then how to do that? Let me just write the code here if you want to understand bit. I don't know if they have it over here. I will otherwise I will write it. Uh, let me see that. Yeah, this is what it is. You can see evaluating lava on multiple process data sets. So if you keep this and I'm not going to do that because it will take a lot of time. You need accelerate in. Excuse me. You can just go here. You have to copy this. Let's come back here. I already have an A hundred running, but though I will not do that because it will take a lot of time to you know do that. So you see what we are doing here. Uh, let me just. You need accelerate. I already have installed accelerate here. So you need accelerate here to basically get up and running with this. You can see it's a number of processes eight. We are using LMMS eval, giving the model argument, which is the lava model, giving the pre trained model path, which is lava v1.57b, telling which tasks we are saying MME, 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 MM bench EN, keeping a batch size of one. If you don't know what batch size is, what my previous video on. Uh, hyperparameters and training arguments. I'll give the link in description. Then giving the log sample suffix lava, you know, saving somewhere, some somewhere in the directory output path, blah blah blah. This will basically, you know, uh, get your lava model and evaluate using LMM LMMS eval. Okay. Now that's the one. Now the next one is triple MU MMMU. Okay, you can find it out over here. That's the data set that they have. This is the most comprehensive benchmark. If you want to fine tune any vision model, you have to benchmark on triple MU. That's the best one out there. You know, that's a comprehensive. It, it contains more than more than 11,000 uh, multimodal challenges. So if you look at some of the top most uh, benchmarks like Hella Swag, Human Eval, so Human Eval for coding, which has, which has around when I did it earlier, which has around 150 plus complex coding questions. So if you want to fine tune any coding specific LLMs, you have to definitely do it on uh, human eval. Similarly, if you are fine tuning a vision cap vision language model or a large vision language model LVLM, then you need to evaluate on triple MU. So it contains 11,000 plus multimodal challenges. You know, it has college level subject knowledge and has a lot of reasoning based uh, uh, task. Okay including arts, engineering and things like that. So you can look at MMU here, the data sets. Data sets is available on hugging face, guys. Okay, you can find out different, you know, there's 30 subsets, different disciplines, accounting, agriculture, art, blah, blah, blah. You can just download it completely and try it out. Okay. Uh, if you scroll down, they would have something called, oh, and they can see public health, which is fantastic. So they have public health. They have everything, you know, to, to test it out. You can go through it, test it out here. Okay. And the last one is MM Bench. Okay. Uh, let me just close this. Now, MM Bench is an assessment benchmark consisting of 3000 single choice questions. So it has 3000 single size questions. You can find out not 3000, then it becomes 11 to 22, 22 25. Okay. Uh, 3000 single choice questions, MMM Bench, and test. Uh, but it has probably I'm wrong with the numbers, but it has different uh, 
questions related to OCR, optical character recognition, object localization and things like that. So if you want to find out the spatial characteristic, now imagine uh, at your organization, at, at your workplace or even as a hobby project, if you are fine tuning a vision model, then and if you have to benchmark those for spatial characteristics like bounding boxes, segmentations and things like that, then you need to use MM Bench because they have diverse uh, questions on OCR, object localizations, etc. That's what it does. Okay. Basically, it uses a, a method called circular eval. If you read the uh, research paper, probably I'll recommend reading that. Okay, so they would have some it somewhere here to go through here and find that. Yeah. That's what it is, guys. On the uh, this one now, if you come here to technical details, okay. Let me show you how to inference. I'll probably also show you how to fine tune it. I already have a fine tuning video, so I'm not gonna do a fine tuning here, but I'll show you. If you look at Lava, okay. So the main trick is to integrate the image and text representation, guys. So if you fine tune any vision model, you have to integrate the image and text representation, and then you feed the feed into a text decoder. To generate it and then the most common and you know, well-known method often consists of an image encoder so you have a text encoder image encoder and things like that so some model like vision some model like few for example it has no image uh, uh, encoder i believe okay so i will talk about that how they do it but if you look at lava so for lava i'll just let's close this for now for lava you can see you need transformers and accelerate to install i already have installed it over here and what I'm doing next, I'm getting Lava Next processor and Lava Next for conditional generation from transformers. And then I have, I'm importing torch. You can see it over here. And then I'm saying, use the CUDA because I'm using GPU, LCPU, the pretty standard line for mounting the device. And then I'm using Lava Next processor from pre-train, getting the processor. This is the model that I'm going to use. So let me show that. Okay, it's This is the model that we are using. And you can see it says, yeah, this is the model. Okay, so it's a it's a combine it's a combination of different models, guys. This is fantastic. So this is what we I've used here, and then I'm using Lava Next for conditional generation dot from pre-trained, passing that model, and then I'm saying a low CPU memory. That is fine. You can also make it false if you are on A hundred. You don't need that. Okay. Now Lava model. If you talk about Lava, it's consist of clip. Clip is an image encoder again created by OpenAI. Everybody talks about that OpenAI only has given closed source. Come on, OpenAI has given you Clip, guys. You know, to be one which is an open source thingy. So it's a Clip image encoder which is a multimodal projector. So Lava uses Clip and it uses Vicuna. So the Vicuna is again a different uh, uh, large language model. So it so Lava uses Vicuna text decoder and Clip image encoder. So it's a combination of Clip and Vicuna. That's what it does. Okay. Now, I probably have some images as well, but I'm, let's do not go into that. Now we have a lot. So if you talk about few eight, so few eight B ha does not have even image encoder. That architecture is completely different. You know, they the 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 image patches that they have are fit directly into the uh, projection layer. So that's a different architecture. Probably a different video is required for that. But now if you look at here, I've got the model, and if you get the model here. I'm using a image which is there on GitHub, the same documentation of Lava on GitHub repository. And this is the image. And what I'm saying, I'm saying, hey, you take this image and tell me what is shown in the image. And if I'm generating the output, you can see I have a max new token says 100. Now you can increase that. And it says the image appears to be a radar chart. You can see it's a radar chart, of course, which is a type of multivariate chart that displays value for you know, blah 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 right so this is what it is okay this one you can find out out over here this is how you inference it you can also uh, fine-tune it now, if you want to fine-tune guys let me just write it over here how can I add a mark down below okay so uh, not this one this becomes code again so let me just go code I'll make this mark down so if you want to if you want to If you want to fine tune vision models, how are you gonna do that? That's the question. So for fine tuning vision model, I'm gonna add few cells here. Now you can use again. Let me add an markdown here. You can use SFT trainer. So SFT trainer has so SFT trainer is nothing from TRL. TRL is a transformer library, guys. So trans SFT trainer of TRL. 
this is what you can use okay. and you can use different uh, data sets you can find it out on hugging face let me let me show you where can we find out that uh, uh, let me think lava lava has a fine tuning yeah this is the one if you look at this fine tune lava on custom data sets this is the way you have to create your data structure so you need an id for each image so id and then the image and then the conversation so the human write a prompt for stable diffusion to generate this image and the respective output from gpt or whatever so you have sample of images so basically this is the way you have to create your data once you create your data you can go on and fine tuning the uh, script is here if you look at here there's the script they have they have given you the script fine tune task lora.sh so you can use they are using deep speed and I think you should use diff speed. So you can watch my previous videos. I have a lot of fine tuning videos in the fine tuning LLMs playlist. Diff speed will help you with a lot of different things. You know, using a single file, you can have multiple GPUs, faster, flask attention, and things like that. So you should use that. Now, SFT trainer of TRL, this is what you're gonna use for fine tuning. And you can just, yeah, go ahead and use. Lava also has a Lava data collator. You can use that. And then you can use SFT trainer. Uh, and then just get that, uh, get the job done, guys. So. That's what it is. You can see I'll give this probably in description. Let me just download this file. I have downloaded this. I'll I'll give this notebook for inference if you want to inference it. And as I said, the video was more focused towards you know which which leaderboards to follow for vision model, which evaluation benchmarks to you know perform when you are fine tuning it, and how to uh, how to inference and how, what kind of things that you need for fine tuning. Okay, uh, you can watch my previous videos on fine tuning vision model. So I have fine tuned Edafix and IMP V3, two vision models we have fine tuned. You can watch the video. I'll give the links in description. Uh, that's all, guys, for this video. If you have any uh, thoughts, feedbacks, please let me know in the comment box. Uh, you can also reach out to me through my social media channels. Find all the information on channel banner and channel about us. If you like the content I'm creating, please hit the like icon. And if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel, guys. That helps me motivate. Uh, that also motivates me to create more videos in near future. Okay, that's all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.